And then you later ended up feeling, uh, you know, going into the reserves. Yeah, I, I stayed. I, I served my time in the off season of the NFL. What made you? What went to that? Well, that's something I always wanted to be a soldier first, anyway. And I thought, as each year got by, your career went longer than anticipated in the NFL. But I always figured if, I, if my career was short, I had something to fall back. On. And I always wanted to be a soldier, and the, and the the stuff that I had to do militarily kept me in such good shape. For the art, for the football, they kind of work hand in hand. You know, the similar. There's, a, there's so much similarities between the two, especially I was an infantry officer, a weapons expert, so it was always everything I did was physical, competitive, and, uh, you know, the only difference is life and death on this side. Welcome, everybody, to another exciting edition of Up On Game Presents Conversations with a Legend. This week, I got a dude that's super special, near and dear to my heart, uh, role model, mentor, hero, in so many different ways. Um, I got my man, Mr. Ed Reynolds, on, on the show today. What's going on, Mr. Mr. Senior Ed? What's, uh, 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 obviously, the Giants, uh, obviously, the, the Patriots. Uh, how you been, man? What's what's going on? It's been a little bit. First of all, it's a tremendous pleasure to be on your podcast today. But most importantly, to see you back in out here doing the media stuff. That's so good to see. And I Thank know you. this podcast will go over well with all your fans. I appreciate it. Well, when I have good guys to talk to and, and we have some really, really good topics to chop it up about, it's definitely um, impactful and, and definitely worthwhile. And I know you... Your background, um, obviously, being being a part of our military, um, being a part of our even our NFL security at one point in time, um, you've just always been a natural leader. So let's let's jump into let's jump into that. Obviously, you have on your legends gear. Uh, <laughs> what and you've been a part of it from day one. What what has Ed Reynolds been up to as of late? What's he got going on? Well, the most important thing is being a part of the Legends community. But you remember, you were our, you were the leader, the, the director of our region at the start. And your career pulled you away. And then I ended up getting that position that you had passed on to me as director of the Northeast region. Still very involved in that. You know how, just like you, we are serving leaders. We serve uh, our brotherhood. And we do everything we can to, to to provide them with the necessary tools to help young men make informed decisions. Uh, and because we've been through the uh, cauldron or we've been, we've gone through this, been in the hazard, we afford them the opportunity for my experiences to hope they don't make the mistakes we made. All right. So in, in everything that you, you've ever done, Ed, it's always been to help, and and service other people you've always been a leader of men and leaders of men have always been the best servants of of their fellow man so i i know you 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 said right now you're actually in the hospital right now tell me tell me a little bit about what you got going on well i went through the 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 pre-screening stuff that we get from our latest collective bargain agreement that deal that we have the designated hospital and you have the three phases of preventative uh, screenings you can do that are free for former NFL players. And then my last test, the colonoscopy, I found out that I had colon cancer. Oh man. So it was from that that I came here to Baptist, one of the best hospitals in the area and in, in the country really. And, uh, starting up to schedule up my uh, chemotherapy. Okay. So did they catch it early? Like, are you are are you going to be okay? Like, talk to me. Yeah, they, they caught it early, but okay. it's still it's uh what they call metastatic colon cancer. Okay, so it has has moved to the liver. So with that, then you have to start off with chemo before you can go into the surgical options. Okay, all right, praying for you, bro. Oh yeah, I got a great 
I got a large army of prayer warriors. You got to have them. Indeed, indeed. And then that's, that's, I mean, it's so important to make sure you're, you're addressing your, your health needs and, and checking on yourself and, and obviously physically, but also emotionally and mentally. Uh, just talk to me a little bit about that support system and how that exists within the Legends community. Well, first and foremost, is all the people we work with, and people like yourself, I mean, also. But with all the guys I work with in the Legends community, no, you have somebody that talks to, you know. Now I have all my dear friends calling once a week and checking up, what is your mindset? And then, of course, we go through that service that we are provided with the clinicians. And so I have a clinician that I work with and talk to every week. And I've been doing that for a while. But so now you start dealing with him and dealing with the anxiety or the thought processes when you start your treatments and how to get through the process. And going through what you're dealing with now, I would say what has your upbringing what has your playing days how much of a part is that playing in this this next phase this challenge that you're dealing with now well it's, it's funny i look at everything just like a game plan just like we played or just when i was in the military so it's funny when i just finished meeting with the doctor i said okay he said well this is where i'm going to do it this is where i want to do it because i know you understand that you want everybody in the room when we create our game plan so that as we get started with the chemo, I'm going to bring in surgeons in so they see it from the beginning. He said, we want the offense, the defense, and the head coach all in the room at the same time. So it was neat. It was, a, it was a good conversation. That he understood my thought processes, and then he he's coordinating his efforts to address what we got to deal with the same way I would from a football or military standpoint. Now, this is considered to be a defining moment for you obviously, and, and you making sure you get through this and, and come out on the other side uh, healthier. Give me, give me some defining, give me a defining moment about your mindset, because you're a very, you have been one of the most focused, most driven, just, just serious, like, like you're a man's man. What what has what what played? Is there a moment in particular? Is it is it a sports moment? Is it a parent moment? What moment in particular has has led to you, you know, having the mindset and approach that you have, and how you handle things in your life? Well, I think it's just a lot about how we we brought up. So anyway, you know how your father and I hit it off. You know, your father was a Vietnam veteran. My father was a Korean and two-time Vietnam veteran. So we had the same, similar. It was a lot to do with my father, my mother's upbringing. My mother was an educator. Uh, my father was a military man. So everything starts with expectations, defining boundaries. And then you know, you're only limited to what you can do by yourself. Don't let other people set your limits. You're limited to what you can do by yourself. How did that play a part? Like, how did you get involved with football? How did that How did that lead you into playing ball? Well, it's funny. It was, uh, we all played out in the yard where I grew up in the country. You know, in between working in the fields, you know, pulling, pulling tobacco, cutting buckwood, uh, taking care of the farm. You know, you played football. And that's when you had the most fun. That's getting away from work. And so backyard football. So you had to, everybody had sets of brothers and sisters. They went up and down the road. So my oldest brother, when they played, we had to stand on the sideline and we weren't big enough or tough enough. And then when it was our chance, my little brother, my smaller, my youngest brother had to stand on the sideline and wait his turn. Kind of like when I, I bumped into a gentleman from Pittsburgh and he told me the best stories of him seeing you when you were in the ninth grade. Now, he claimed he saw you dunk a basketball in the ninth grade in a varsity basketball game. He's probably right. <laughs> He's probably right. I heard you could hit that. He also said you were one heck of a baseball player. Well, I, I was okay. I was okay. But basketball track was definitely my main, too, until football kind of evolved. I stopped growing up. I started growing more out. So 
I, I adapted and I adjusted to my environment, what my body was prepared for. So, well, it's like you say, the story came to me. It's this person witnessed it. Yeah, he grew up in that area. And he said, you in the ninth grade, you took down a rebound and went up flat footed and dunked. I said, oh my goodness, I believe it. <laughs> well, the, not, to, not to make it about me, because obviously a lot of people may not, you know, with, with this whole way society is now with recency effect, people don't know who we are. People don't know what we have accomplished. And and this is a major reason why I'm doing this podcast and having conversations with a legend because it, to know who you guys are and to remind them of, even if they've never had the opportunity to see some of us, even if they don't remember or just needed to to be refreshed on it, like you were a dope linebacker, man, and 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 you you did you did what you did just talk to me talk to me about you like how how were you in in high school was it was it more about you know was it more about playing a whole bunch of sports was it you just from being in the fields when you you guys were were doing it to get away from the work what how how did it materialize for you like did it was it you were a high profile recruit was it you were an obscure re recruit because you ended up going to UVA, which is uh, one heck of a, a, a university. It, it says everything about your intelligence level. I mean, how did that all pan out and play out for you? Well, back when we were we were coming where we grew up, we all played every season. We played the season, so you played football in the fall. Basketball was my sport in the winter, and then track was my sport. I didn't play baseball. We had Half of us that played football together played, either played baseball or they played back or ran track. So, you know, the, the football team made up to, most of the track big team. Guy, you wrestle, right? Yeah. Right. Uh -huh. If you big guy didn't play basketball, you wrestle in the winter. Uh -huh. So, uh -huh. three sports. And I think, to tell you the truth, I think that's what helped us athletically uh, better than they do now with all these. You have a lot of these kids now, and which I think is to their detriment. Be honest, but from that, you you know, you grew up and had an opportunity to get recruited. I was an obscure recruit to a point because I never thought about going off to school to play football. I wanted to go to either one of the military academies. So when I was in the tenth grade, my focus was okay. I want to go to the military academy. So you start getting your stuff in order with your congressman and his senators and whatever. And uh, through that process, you just you blossomed and you got to be seen and, and it started getting recruited and after going to West Point and Navy and BMI Virginia Tech I went to UVA and they had the better looking women uh -huh. so. <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> so that kind of ended that whole conversation of going into the military academy <laughs> I mean there's no reason for you to waste your good looks right I mean you had them you might as well use them to your advantage hey man I thought I died and went to heaven then when you were 18 <laughs> right right <laughs> but I did but when I got to college I went on to join the ROTC just okay. for the heck of it so. and then you later ended up feeling uh you know going into the reserves yeah, I, I stay. I, I served my time in the off season of the NFL. Talk to me about I, that. What made so you? What, what you, went to that? Well, that's something I always wanted to be a soldier first, anyway. And I thought, as each year got by, your career went longer than anticipated in the NFL. But I always figured if, I, if my career was short, I had something to fall back. On. And I always wanted to be a soldier, and the, and the. The stuff that I had to do militarily kept me in such good shape. For the art, for the football, they kind of work hand in hand. You know, the similar. There's a there's so much similarities between the two. Especially, I was an infantry officer, a weapons expert, so it was always everything I did was physical, competitive, and uh, you know, the only difference is life and death on this side sure. compared to the NFL. Yeah. Now, let me ask you this: in your day. Because what you what you what you did and what you accomplished, that would be 
in a lot of a lot of ways it would be praised it would in a in a lot of ways make you a bigger celebrity because of your your willingness to serve where we in in your day especially even in my day media was very selective and and so so if you were the right person what you did made you a superstar in today's society it, it, there's so many media outlets that what you did would have been it would have made you a, a superstar so now with this whole branding thing and, and the nil and, and naming image and likeness and how they're going into the direction of giving guys the ability to monetize their name to monetize their image and likeness and to think that you could have put on a you could have did a whole thing about wearing the the uniform of the military and then here's my uniform for the game and and that would have turned into a naming image likeness i mean bonanza for you i mean you would have been able to monetize yourself in so many different ways how do you view that now like i know you old school so i'm I'm interested to hear what you have to say well i'm happy i'm happy for the generation you know like i was happy for what uh lavar arrington was able to make as compared to what we made I, you know, I didn't get into some people may get jealous or former players get jealous about what guys are making i'm happy man I'm, the game has changed it's not as physical as it was when we played to a certain extent they don't have to work as hard as we did to, you know, how hard we had to work at times. But I don't begrudge anyone for that. I, I look for – take advantage of all these opportunities that are being made avail, available now. Educate yourself. So them, use them to the fullness. And for us – I just want them to keep being successful because they can keep improving my benefits. Indeed. I know that's right. I know that's right. So, so – in improving those benefits and having that success, and you had you had a son that that was Ed Junior was super successful playing the game as well, and also was super intelligent. Went to Stanford. The ability to be able to monetize yourself in college, what would you give advice in terms of that to families and players of today? Now that that's an option. Well, make sure that you get the right people around you that understand that what that all means and what it says. For example, if somebody like LeVar Arrington had a group of experts that you had working together to ensure, then they, you would go talk to LeVar Arrington because he's been there. He knows what this means. He knows what they're trying to accomplish. And, and you also, like you said, a servant leader. You want to help these young people capitalize uh, on their images and, and what they truly deserve. I mean, you think about the money that Penn State made uh, off of you and, and all of that, that great class that came through at that time. And y'all didn't get anything. Right. Right. And now, and now the universities or the system itself is doing what is supposed to, what should have been done and needs to be done. Uh, but we just got to make sure that these kids are, are managed and, and not taken advantage of, if you know what I mean. I do know what you mean. I do. All right. Here's a big one. What is what is Ed Reynolds hope to be remembered for? What is Ed Reynolds' legacy? Ed Reynolds wants to be remembered as someone that anytime you needed help and anytime you came to him, he gave you his full attention in trying to assist you in accomplishing what you needed to do. Even if it was meeting a girl. <laughs> Even if it was meeting a girl. <laughs> Thank you. That I dated, by the way. Not not just like, you know, horrible hookup type stuff. Gentlemanly. Yeah, like you are a gentleman's gentleman. And yeah. and and you leverage that for me to be a gentleman and 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 um <laughs> benefit but yes yes i digress go ahead. i'm sorry i'm sorry for that uh, no that's that's the most important thing most important thing of all and also you know it's funny you made a point early when you talked about the people thinking about service and how they treated different your father and our father weren't treated that way 
on their return, you know, from that tree. I mean, later in your life, your father was able to experience it. I think my dad didn't get to experience it as much before he passed. But the, the way they're properly treating the military people finally, now is great right? To see. Yeah, finally. Because those who carried that burden to the Vietnam, they didn't get that treatment. They were not appreciated at all. Yeah. So that's the legacy. All right. Proudest moment of your career, and then I'm gonna let you go. Proudest moment of my career was stopping John Riggins on the goal line two times in a row. Ooh. In, in his prime. In his prime. <laughs> Love it. I love it. All right. Hey, you got anything hey. else that you want to share before I let you go? No, I'm just you make sure to tell the family I say hello. I certainly Such will. A, you keep doing this. You're a service to all of us. And uh, you're just a great example of what I look forward to people that I've been around become. Thank you. You are the you're the epitome of it. Well, uh, you I, I've always taken everything you've given me. And, and and people don't know how deep our history goes, but oh, absolutely. man, absolutely. I, from cooking at the house to to <laughs> all kinds of, hey, and never forget the open egg sandwich that you was making us. <laughs> you, you was the first one to put me up on open egg sandwiches. So, I mean, just everything, man, to us hanging our time and at the Pro Bowls. And I joked about, you know, meeting, but, but that's a true story. Yeah. Like a very respectable yeah. person, that that you you ended up introducing me to um you just have always been someone who has always assisted me and has helped guide me and i mean i've made a lot of decisions based off of the the guidance that you gave me at that point in time in my life so i i mean let me be the the one that say how how appreciative i am of who you have meant to me and my family and my life and and i know there's so many that would echo that sentiment you have been you know you might have not have been one of the guys that like the big marquee name that oh the Emmett smith or the bruce smith or whatever the Deion sanders but it's guys like you that have been a uh, people of man of service to guys like me and and it's the reason why we have to be um who we are in these moments to make sure that y'all's legacies are protected and 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 grown so when they told me you was gonna come on man i was super excited we gotta keep up off offline by the way gotta reconnect i will i will most definitely yeah god bless man you know i love you e hey love you too bro all god right. bless you and your indeed man all right this is conversations with a legend up on game presents that's ed reynolds the ed reynolds ed reynolds senior if, if you're nasty uh so next week, I think we'll have Tori hold on next week. So make sure you tune in, check us out, subscribe to our, our YouTube channel. And yeah, until next time, I'm LeVar Arrington. That's, that's Ed Reynolds. Y'all be well, be great. All right. Talk to y'all soon.